Section 51 Hearken unto me, saith the Lord your God, and I will speak unto my servant Edward Partridge, and give unto him directions. For it must needs be that he receive directions how to organize this people. For it must needs be that they be organized according to my laws. If otherwise, they will be cut off. Wherefore, let my servant Edward Partridge, and those whom he has chosen, and whom I am well pleased, appoint unto this people their portions, every man equal according to his family, according to his circumstances and his wants and needs. And let my servant Edward Partridge, when he shall appoint a man his portion, give unto him a writing that shall secure unto him his portion, that he shall hold it, even this right and this inheritance in the church, until he transgresses and is not accounted worthy by the voice of the church, according to the laws and covenants of the church, to belong to the church. And if he shall transgress and is not accounted worthy to belong to the church, he shall not have power to claim that portion which he has consecrated unto the bishop for the poor and needy of my church. Therefore, he shall not retain the gift, but shall only have claim on that portion that is deeded unto him. And thus all things shall be made sure according to the laws of the land. And let that which belongs to this people be appointed unto this people. And the money which is left unto this people, let there be an agent appointed unto this people to take the money to provide food and raiment according to the wants of this people. And let every man deal honestly, and be alike among this people, and receive alike, that ye may be one, even as I have commanded you. And let that which belongeth to this people not be taken and given unto that of another church. Wherefore, if another church would receive money of this church, let them pay unto this church again, according as they shall agree. And this shall be done through the bishop or the agent, which shall be appointed by the voice of the church. And again, let the bishop appoint a storehouse unto this church, and let all things, both in money and in meat, which are more than is needful for the wants of this people, be kept in the hands of the bishop, and let him also reserve unto himself for his own wants, and for the wants of his family, as he shall be employed in doing this business. And thus I grant unto this people a privilege of organizing themselves according to my laws, and I consecrate unto them this land for a little season, until I the Lord shall provide for them otherwise, and command them to go hence. And the hour and the day is not given unto them, wherefore let them act upon this land as for years, and this shall turn unto them for their good. Behold, this shall be an example unto my servant Edward Partridge, in other places, in all churches. And whoso is found a faithful, a just, and a wise steward, shall enter into the joy of his Lord, and shall inherit eternal life. Verily I say unto you, I am Jesus Christ, who cometh quickly in an hour you think not. Even so, amen. Section 52 Behold, thus saith the Lord unto the elders, whom he hath called and chosen in these last days, by the voice of his Spirit, saying, I the Lord will make known unto you what I will that ye shall do from this time until the next conference, which shall be held in Missouri, upon the land which I will consecrate unto my people, which are a remnant of Jacob, and those who are heirs according to the covenant. Wherefore, verily I say unto you, let my servants Joseph Smith, Jr. and Sidney Rigdon take their journey as soon as preparations can be made to leave their homes and journey to the land of Missouri. And inasmuch as they are faithful unto me, it shall be made known unto them what they shall do. And it shall also, insomuch as they are faithful, be made known unto them the land of your inheritance. 
And inasmuch as they are not faithful, they shall be cut off, even as I will, as seemeth me good. And again, verily I say unto you, let my servant Lyman White and my servant John Coro take their journey speedily. And also my servant John Murdoch and my servant Hiram Smith take their journey unto the same place by the way of Detroit. And let them journey from thence, preaching the word by the way, saying none other things than that which the prophets and apostles have written, and that which is taught them by the Comforter through the prayer of faith. Let them go two by two, and thus let them preach by the way in every congregation, baptizing by water and the laying on of the hands by the water's side. For thus saith the Lord, I will cut my work short in righteousness, for the days come that I will send forth judgment unto victory. And let my servant Lyman White beware, for Satan desireth to sift him as chaff. And behold, he that is faithful shall be made ruler over many things. And again, I will give unto you a pattern in all things, that ye may not be deceived, for Satan is abroad in the land, and he goeth forth deceiving the nations. Wherefore, he that prayeth, whose spirit is contrite, the same is accepted of me, if ye obey mine ordinances. He that speaketh, whose spirit is contrite, whose language is meek, and edifieth, the same is of God, if ye obey mine ordinances. And again, he that trembleth under my power shall be made strong, and shall bring forth fruits of praise and wisdom, according to the revelations and truths which I have given you. And again, he that is overcome, and bringeth not forth fruits, even according to this pattern, is not of me. Wherefore, by this pattern ye shall know the spirits in all cases, under the whole heavens. And the days have come according to men's faith, it shall be done unto them. Behold, this commandment is given unto all the elders whom I have chosen. And again, verily I say unto you, that my servant Thomas B. Marsh and my servant Ezra Thire take their journey also, preaching the word by the way unto the same land. And again, let my servant Isaac Morley and my servant Ezra Booth take their journey also preaching the word by the way unto the same land. And again, let my servants Edward Partridge and Martin Harris take their journey with my servants Sidney Rigdon and Joseph Smith Jr. Let my servants David Whitmer and Harvey Whitlock also take their journey and preach by the way unto the same land. And let my servants Parley P. Pratt and Orson Pratt take their journey and preach by the way even unto the same land. And let my servants Solomon Hancock and Simeon Carter also take their journey unto the same land and preach by the way. Let my servants Edson Fuller and Jacob Scott also take their journey. Let my servants Levi W. Hancock and Zebedee Coltrane also take their journey. Let my servants Reynolds Cahoon and Samuel H. Smith also take their journey. Let my servants Wheeler Baldwin and William Carter also take their journey. And let my servants Newell Knight and Sayla J. Griffin both be ordained and also take their journey. Yea, verily I say, let all these take their journey unto one place in their several courses, and one man shall not build upon another's foundation, neither journey in another's track. He that is faithful, the same shall be kept and blessed with much fruit. And again I say unto you, let my servants Joseph Wakefield and Solomon Humphrey take their journey into the eastern lands. Let them labor with their families, declaring none other things than the prophets and apostles, that which they have seen and heard, and most assuredly believe, that the prophecies may be fulfilled. In consequence of transgression, let that which was bestowed upon human Bassett be taken from him and placed upon the head of Simon's rider. And again, verily I say unto you, let Jared Carter be ordained a priest, and also George James be ordained a priest. Let the residue of the elders watch over the churches and declare the word in the regions round about them. 
Let them labor with their own hands, that there be no idolatry nor wickedness practiced. And remember in all things the poor and the needy, the sick and the afflicted. For he that doeth not these things, the same is not my disciple. And again, let my servants, Joseph Smith Jr. and Sidney Rigdon and Edward Partridge, take with them a recommend from the church. And let there be one obtained for my servant Oliver Cowdery also. And thus, even as I have said, if ye are faithful, ye shall assemble yourselves together to rejoice upon the land of Missouri, which is the land of your inheritance, which is now the land of your enemies. But behold, I, the Lord, will hasten the city in its time, and will crown the faithful with joy and with rejoicing. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and I will lift them up at the last day. Even so, Amen. Section 53 Behold, I say unto you, my servant Sidney Gilbert, that I have heard your prayers, and you have called upon me, that it should be made known unto you of the Lord your God concerning your calling and election in the church, which I the Lord have raised up in these last days. Behold, I the Lord, who was crucified for the sins of the world, give unto you a commandment, that you shall forsake the world. Take upon you mine ordination, even that of an elder, to preach faith and repentance and remission of sins, according to my word, and the reception of the Holy Spirit by the laying on of hands, and also to be an agent unto this church in the place which shall be appointed by the bishop, according to commandments which shall be given hereafter. And again, verily I say unto you, you shall take your journey with my servants Joseph Smith Jr. and Sidney Rigdon. Behold, these are the first ordinances which you shall receive, and the residue shall be made known in a time to come, according to your labor in my vineyard. And again, I would that ye should learn that he only is saved who endureth unto the end. Even so, Amen. Section 54 Behold, thus saith the Lord, even Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, even he who was crucified for the sins of the world. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, my servant Newell Knight, you shall stand fast in the office whereunto I have appointed you. And if your brethren desire to escape their enemies, let them repent of all their sins, and become truly humble before me and contrite. And as the covenant which they made unto me has been broken, even so it has become void and of none effect. And woe to him by whom this offense cometh, for it had been better for him that he had been drowned in the depth of the sea. But blessed are they who have kept the covenant and observed the commandment, for they shall obtain mercy. Wherefore, go to now and flee the land, lest your enemies come upon you, and take your journey, and appoint whom you will to be your leader, and to pay monies for you. And thus you shall take your journey into the regions westward, under the land of Missouri, under the borders of the Lamanites. And after you have done journeying, behold, I say unto you, Seek ye a living like unto men, until I prepare a place for you. And again, be patient in tribulation until I come. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. And they who have sought me early shall find rest to their souls. Even so, amen. Section 55 Behold, thus saith the Lord unto you, my servant William, yea, even the Lord of the whole earth, thou art called and chosen. And after thou hast been baptized by water, which if you do with an eye single to my glory, you shall have a remission of your sins, and a reception of the Holy Spirit by the laying on of hands. And then thou shalt be ordained by the hand of my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., to be an elder unto this church, to preach repentance and remission of sins by way of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And on whomsoever you shall lay your hands, if they are contrite before me, you shall have power to give the Holy Spirit. 
And again, you shall be ordained to assist my servant Oliver Cowdery to do the work of printing and of selecting and writing books for schools in this church, that little children also may receive instruction before me as is pleasing unto me. And again, verily I say unto you, for this cause you shall take your journey with my servants, Joseph Smith Jr. and Sidney Rigdon, that you may be planted in the land of your inheritance to do this work. And again, let my servant Joseph Coe also take his journey with them. The residue shall be made known hereafter, even as I will. Amen. Section 56 Hearken, O ye people who profess my name, saith the Lord your God. For behold, mine anger is kindled against the rebellious. And they shall know mine arm, and mine indignation in the day of visitation, and of wrath upon the nations. He that will not take up his cross, and follow me, and keep my commandments, the same shall not be saved. Behold, I, the Lord, command, and he that will not obey shall be cut off in mine own due time, after I have commanded, and the commandment is broken. Wherefore I, the Lord, command and revoke, as it seemeth me good. And all this to be answered upon the heads of the rebellious, saith the Lord. Wherefore I revoke the commandment which was given unto my servants Thomas B. Marsh and Ezra Thayer, and give a new commandment unto my servant Thomas, that he shall take up his journey speedily to the land of Missouri. And my servant Selah J. Griffin shall also go with him. For behold, I revoke the commandment which was given unto my servants Selah J. Griffin and Newell Knight in consequence of the stiff-neckedness of my people, which are in Thompson, and their rebellions. Wherefore, let my servant Newell Knight remain with them, and as many as will go may go, that are contrite before me, and be led by him to the land which I have appointed. And again, verily I say unto you, that my servant Ezra Thayer must repent of his pride, and of his selfishness, and obey the former commandment which I have given him concerning the place upon which he lives. And if he will do this, as there shall be no divisions made upon the land, he shall be appointed still to go to the land of Missouri. Otherwise he shall receive the money which he has paid, and shall leave the place, and shall be cut off out of my church, saith the Lord God of hosts. And though the heaven and the earth pass away, these words shall not pass away, but shall be fulfilled. And if my servant Joseph Smith Jr. must needs pay the money, behold, I the Lord will pay it unto him again in the land of Missouri, that those of whom he shall receive may be rewarded again according to that which they do. For according to that which they do, they shall receive, even in lands for their inheritance. Behold, thus saith the Lord unto my people, You have many things to do and to repent of, but behold, your sins have come up unto me and are not pardoned, because you seek to counsel in your own ways, and your hearts are not satisfied, and ye obey not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Woe unto you, rich men, that will not give your substance to the poor, for your riches will canker your souls, and this shall be your lamentation in the day of visitation and of judgment and of indignation. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and my soul is not saved. Woe unto you poor men, whose hearts are not broken, whose spirits are not contrite, and whose bellies are not satisfied, and whose hands are not stayed from laying hold upon other men's goods, whose eyes are full of greediness, and who will not labor with your own hands. But blessed are the poor who are pure in heart, whose hearts are broken, and whose spirits are contrite. For they shall see the kingdom of God coming in power and great glory unto their deliverance. For the fatness of the earth shall be theirs. For behold, the Lord shall come, and his recompense shall be with him. And he shall reward every man, and the poor shall rejoice. 
and their generations shall inherit the earth from generation to generation, forever and ever. And now I make an end of speaking unto you. Even so, amen. Section 57 Hearken, O ye elders of my church, saith the Lord your God, who have assembled yourselves together according to my commandments in this land, which is the land of Missouri, which is the land which I have appointed and consecrated for the gathering of the saints. Wherefore, this is the land of promise, and the place for the city of Zion. And thus saith the Lord your God, If you will receive wisdom, here is wisdom. Behold, the place which is now called Independence is the center place, and a spot for the temple is lying westward upon a lot which is not far from the courthouse. Wherefore, it is wisdom that the land should be purchased by the saints, and also every tract lying westward, even unto the line running directly between Jew and Gentile, and also every tract bordering by the prairies, Inasmuch as my disciples are enabled to buy lands, behold, this is wisdom, that they may obtain it for an everlasting inheritance. And let my servant Sidney Gilbert stand in the office to which I have appointed him, to receive monies, to be an agent unto the church, to buy land in all the regions round about, inasmuch as can be done in righteousness, and as wisdom shall direct. And let my servant Edward Partridge stand in the office to which I have appointed him, and divide unto the saints their inheritance, even as I have commanded, and also those whom he has appointed to assist him. And again, verily I say unto you, let my servant Sidney Gilbert plant himself in this place, and establish a store, that he may sell goods without fraud, that he may obtain money to buy lands, for the good of the saints, and that he may obtain whatsoever things the disciples may need to plant them in their inheritance. And also let my servant Sidney Gilbert obtain a license. Behold, here is wisdom, and whoso readeth, let him understand, that he may send goods also unto the people, even by whom he will as clerks employed in his service. And thus provide for my saints, that my gospel may be preached unto those who sit in darkness and in the region and shadow of death. And again, verily I say unto you, let my servant William W. Phelps be planted in this place and be established as a printer unto the church. And lo, if the world receive his writings, behold, here is wisdom. Let him obtain whatsoever he can obtain in righteousness, for the good of the saints. And let my servant Oliver Cowdery assist him, even as I have commanded, in whatsoever place I shall appoint unto him, to copy and to correct and select, that all things may be right before me, as it shall be proved by the Spirit through him. And thus let those of whom I have spoken be planted in the land of Zion, as speedily as can be, with their families, to do those things even as I have spoken. Now concerning the gathering, let the bishop and the agent make preparations for those families which have been commanded to come to this land as soon as possible, and to plant them in their inheritance. And unto the residue of both elders and members, further directions shall be given hereafter. Even so, amen. Section 58 Hearken, O ye elders of my church, and give ear to my word, and learn of me what I will concerning you, and also concerning this land unto which I have sent you. For verily I say unto you, Blessed is he that keepeth my commandments, whether in life or in death, and he that is faithful in tribulation, the reward of the same is greater in the kingdom of heaven. Ye cannot behold with your natural eyes for the present time, the design of your God concerning those things which shall come hereafter, and the glory which shall follow after much tribulation. For after much tribulation come the blessings. Wherefore the day cometh that ye shall be crowned with much glory. The hour is not yet, but is nigh at hand. 
Remember this, which I tell you, before that you may lay it to heart, and receive that which is to follow. Behold, verily I say unto you, For this cause I have sent you, that you might be obedient, and that your hearts might be prepared to bear testimony of the things which are to come, and also that you might be honored in laying the foundation and in bearing record of the land upon which the Zion of God shall stand, and also that a feast of fat things might be prepared for the poor, yea, a feast of fat things of wine on the lees, well refined, that the earth may know that the mouths of the prophets shall not fail. Yea, a supper of the house of the Lord, well prepared, unto which all nations shall be invited, first the rich and the learned, the wise and the noble. And after that cometh the day of my power. Then shall the poor, the lame, and the blind, and the deaf come in unto the marriage of the Lamb, and partake of the supper of the Lord, prepared for the great day to come. Behold, I, the Lord, have spoken it. And that the testimony might go forth from Zion, yea, from the mouth of the city of the heritage of God. Yea, for this cause I have sent you hither, and have selected my servant Edward Partridge, and have appointed unto him his mission in this land. But if he repent not of his sins, which are unbelief and blindness of heart, let him take heed lest he fall. Behold, his mission is given unto him, and it shall not be given again. And whoso standeth in this mission is appointed to be a judge in Israel, like as it was in ancient days, to divide the lands of the heritage of God unto his children, and to judge his people by the testimony of the just, and by the assistance of his counselors, according to the laws of the kingdom which are given by the prophets of God. For verily I say unto you, My law shall be kept on this land. Let no man think he is ruler, but let God rule him that judgeth, according to the counsel of his own will, or, in other words, him that counseleth or sitteth upon the judgment seat. Let no man break the laws of the land, for he that keepeth the laws of God hath no need to break the laws of the land. Wherefore be subject to the powers that be until he reigns whose right it is to reign, and subdues all enemies under his feet. Behold, the laws which ye have received from my hand are the laws of the church, and in this light ye shall hold them forth. Behold, here is wisdom. And now, as I spake concerning my servant Edward Partridge, this land is the land of his residence, and those whom he has appointed for his counselors, and also the land of the residence of him whom I have appointed to keep my storehouse. Wherefore, let them bring their families to this land, as they shall counsel between themselves and me. For behold, it is not meet that I should command in all things, for he that is compelled in all things the same is a slothful and not a wise servant. Wherefore he receiveth no reward. Verily I say, men should be anxiously engaged in a good cause, and do many things of their own free will, and bring to pass much righteousness. For the power is in them, wherein they are agents unto themselves, and inasmuch as men do good, they shall in no wise lose their reward. But he that doeth not anything until he is commanded, and receiveth a commandment with doubtful heart, and keepeth it with slothfulness, the same is damned. Who am I that made man, saith the Lord, that will hold him guiltless that obeys not my commandments? Who am I, saith the Lord, that have promised, and have not fulfilled? I command, and men obey not. I revoke, and they receive not the blessing. Then they say in their hearts, This is not the work of the Lord, for his promises are not fulfilled. But woe unto such, for their reward lurketh beneath, and not from above. And now I give unto you further directions concerning this land. It is wisdom in me that my servant Martin Harris should be an example unto the church in laying his monies before the bishop of the church. 
And also this is a law unto every man that cometh unto this land to receive an inheritance. And he shall do with his monies according as the law directs. And it is wisdom also that there should be lands purchased and in independence for the place of the storehouse and also for the house of the printing. And other directions concerning my servant Martin Harris shall be given him of the Spirit, that he may receive his inheritance as seemeth him good. And let him repent of his sins, for he seeketh the praise of the world. And also let my servant William W. Phelps stand in the office to which I have appointed him, and receive his inheritance in the land. And also he hath need to repent, for I the Lord am not well pleased with him for he seeketh to excel, and he is not sufficiently meek before me. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I the Lord remember them no more. By this ye may know, if a man repenteth of his sins, behold, he will confess them and forsake them. And now verily I say concerning the residue of the elders of my church, the time has not yet come for many years, for them to receive their inheritance in this land, except they desire it through the prayer of faith, only as it shall be appointed unto them of the Lord. For behold, they shall push the people together from the ends of the earth. Wherefore, assemble yourselves together, and they who are not appointed to stay in this land, let them preach the gospel in the regions round about. And after that, let them return to their homes. Let them preach by the way, and bear testimony of the truth in all places, and call upon the rich, the high, and the low, and the poor to repent. And let them build up churches, inasmuch as the inhabitants of the earth will repent. And let there be an agent appointed by the voice of the church, under the church in Ohio to receive monies to purchase lands in Zion. And I give unto my servant Sidney Rigdon a commandment that he shall write a description of the land of Zion and a statement of the will of God, as it shall be made known by the Spirit unto him, and an epistle and subscription to be presented unto all the churches to obtain monies to be put into the hands of the bishop of himself, or the agent as seemeth him good, or as he shall direct to purchase lands for an inheritance for the children of God. For behold, verily I say unto you, the Lord willeth that the disciples and the children of men should open their hearts, even to purchase this whole region of country as soon as time will permit. Behold, here is wisdom. Let them do this, lest they receive none inheritance, save it be by the shedding of blood. And again, inasmuch as there is land obtained, let there be workmen sent forth of all kinds unto this land to labor for the saints of God. Let all these things be done in order, and let the privileges of the lands be made known from time to time by the bishop or the agent of the church. And let the work of the gathering be not in haste, nor by flight, but let it be done as it shall be counseled by the elders of the church at the conferences, according to the knowledge which they receive from time to time. And let my servant Sidney Rigdon consecrate and dedicate this land, and the spot for the temple unto the Lord, and let a conference meeting be called. And after that, let my servants Sidney Rigdon and Joseph Smith Jr. return, and also Oliver Cowdery with them, to accomplish the residue of the work which I have appointed unto them in their own land, and the residue as shall be ruled by the conferences. And let no man return from this land except he bear record by the way of that which he knows and most assuredly believes. Let that which has been bestowed upon Ziba Peterson be taken from him, and let him stand as a member in the church, and labor with his own hands, 
with the brethren until he is sufficiently chastened for all his sins. For he confesseth them not, and he thinketh to hide them. Let the residue of the elders of this church who are coming to this land, some of whom are exceedingly blessed, even above measure, also hold a conference upon this land. And let my servant Edward Partridge direct the conference which shall be held by them. And let them also return preaching the gospel by the way, bearing record of the things which are revealed unto them. For verily the sound must go forth from this place unto all the world, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The gospel must be preached unto every creature, with signs following them that believe. And behold, the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Section 59 Behold, blessed saith the Lord are they who have come up unto this land with an eye single to my glory, according to my commandments. For those that live shall inherit the earth, and those that die shall rest from all their labors, and their work shall follow them, and they shall receive a crown in the mansions of my Father, which I have prepared for them. Yea, blessed are they whose feet stand upon the land of Zion, who have obeyed my gospel. For they shall receive for their reward the good things of the earth, and it shall bring forth in its strength. And they shall also be crowned with blessings from above, yea, and with commandments not a few, and with revelations in their time, they that are faithful and diligent before me. Wherefore I give unto them a commandment, saying thus, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, mind and strength. And in the name of Jesus Christ thou shalt serve him. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt not steal, neither commit adultery, nor kill, nor do anything like unto it. Thou shalt thank the Lord thy God in all things. Thou shalt offer a sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in righteousness, even that of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world, thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon my holy day. For verily this is a day appointed unto you to rest from your labors, and to pay thy devotions unto the Most High. Nevertheless, thy vows shall be offered up in righteousness on all days and at all times. But remember that on this, the Lord's day, thou shalt offer thine oblations and thy sacraments unto the Most High, confessing thy sins unto thy brethren and before the Lord. And on this day thou shalt do none other thing, only let thy food be prepared with singleness of heart, that thy fasting may be perfect, or, in other words, that thy joy may be full. Verily, this is fasting and prayer, or, in other words, rejoicing in prayer. And inasmuch as ye do these things with thanksgiving, with cheerful hearts and countenances, not with much laughter, for this is sin, but with a glad heart and a cheerful countenance. Verily I say, that inasmuch as ye do this, the fullness of the earth is yours, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and that which climbeth upon the trees, and walketh upon the earth, yea, and the herb, and the good things which come of the earth, whether for food, or for raiment, or for houses, or for barns, or for orchards, or for gardens, or for vineyards. Ye all things which come of the earth in the season thereof are made for the benefit and the use of man, both to please the eye and to gladden the heart. Ye for food and for raiment, for taste and for smell, to strengthen the body and to enliven the soul. And it pleaseth God that he hath given all these things unto man, for unto this end were they made, to be used with judgment, not to excess, neither by exhortation. And in nothing doth man offend God, or against none is his wrath kindled, save those who confess not his hand in all things, and obey not his commandments. Behold, this is according to the law and the prophets. Wherefore, trouble me no more concerning this matter. 
But learn that he who doeth the works of righteousness shall receive his reward, even peace in this world and eternal life in the world to come. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and the Spirit beareth record. Amen. Section 60 Behold, thus saith the Lord unto the elders of his church, who are to return speedily to the land from whence they came. Behold, it pleaseth me that you have come up hither. But with some I am not well pleased, for they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given unto them, because of the fear of man. Woe unto such, for mine anger is kindled against them. And it shall come to pass, if they are not more faithful unto me, it shall be taken away, even that which they have. For I, the Lord, rule in the heavens above and among the armies of the earth. And in the day when I shall make up my jewels, all men shall know what it is that bespeaketh the power of God. But verily I will speak unto you concerning your journey unto the land from whence you came. Let there be a craft made, or bought, as seemeth you good. It mattereth not unto me. And take your journey speedily for the place which is called St. Louis. And from thence let my servants Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith Jr., and Oliver Cowdery take their journey for Cincinnati. And in this place let them lift up their voice and declare my word with loud voices, without wrath or doubting, lifting up holy hands upon them. For I am able to make you holy, and your sins are forgiven you. And let the residue take their journey from St. Louis, two by two, and preach the word, not in haste, among the congregations of the wicked, until they return to the churches from whence they came. And all this for the good of the churches, for this intent have I sent them. And let my servant Edward Partridge impart of the money which I have given him, a portion unto mine elders, who are commanded to return. And he that is able, let him return it by the way of the agent, and he that is not of him, it is not required. And now I speak of the residue who are to come unto this land. Behold, they have been sent to preach my gospel among the congregations of the wicked, wherefore I give unto them a commandment. Thus thou shalt not idle away thy time, neither shalt thou bury thy talent, that it may not be known. And after thou hast come up unto the land of Zion, and hast proclaimed my word, thou shalt speedily return, proclaiming my word among the congregations of the wicked, not in haste, neither in wrath, nor with strife. And shake off the dust of thy feet against those who receive thee not, not in their presence, lest thou provoke them, but in secret, and wash thy feet as a testimony against them in the day of judgment. Behold, this is sufficient for you, and the will of him who hath sent you. And by the mouth of my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., it shall be made known concerning Sidney Rigdon and Oliver Cowdery, the residue hereafter. Even so, amen. Section 61 Behold and hearken unto the voice of him who has all power, who is from everlasting to everlasting, even Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Behold, verily thus saith the Lord unto you, O ye elders of my church, who are assembled upon this spot, whose sins are now forgiven you. For I, the Lord, forgive sins, and am merciful unto those who confess their sins with humble hearts. But verily I say unto you, that it is not needful for this whole company of mine elders to be moving swiftly upon the waters, whilst the inhabitants on either side are perishing in unbelief. Nevertheless, I suffered it that ye might bear record. Behold, there are many dangers upon the waters, and more especially hereafter. For I, the Lord, have decreed in mine anger many destructions upon the waters, yea, and especially upon these waters. Nevertheless, all flesh is in mine hand, and he that is faithful among you shall not perish by the waters. Wherefore, it is expedient 
that my servant Sidney Gilbert and my servant William W. Phelps be in haste upon their errand and mission. Nevertheless, I would not suffer that you should part until you were chastened for all your sins, that you might be one, that you might not perish in wickedness. But now, verily I say, it behooveth me that you should part. Wherefore, let my servants Sidney Gilbert and William W. Phelps take their former company, and let them take their journey in haste, that they may fill their mission, and through faith they shall overcome. And inasmuch as they are faithful, they shall be preserved, and I, the Lord, will be with them. And let the residue take that which is needful for clothing. Let my servant Sidney Gilbert take that which is not needful with him, as you shall agree. And now behold, for your good I gave unto you a commandment concerning these things, and I, the Lord, will reason with you as with men in days of old. Behold, I, the Lord, in the beginning blessed the waters, but in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. Wherefore, the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. And it shall be said in days to come that none is able to go up to the land of Zion upon the waters, but he that is upright in heart. And as I, the Lord, in the beginning cursed the land, even so in the last days have I blessed it in its time for the use of my saints, that they may partake the fatness thereof. And now I give unto you a commandment, that what I say unto one, I say unto all, that you shall forewarn your brethren concerning these waters, that they come not in journeying upon them, lest their faith fail, and they are caught in snares. I, the Lord, have decreed, and the destroyer rideth upon the face thereof, and I revoke not the decree. I, the Lord, was angry with you yesterday, but mine anger is turned away. Wherefore, let those concerning whom I have spoken, that should take their journey in haste, again I say unto you, let them take their journey in haste. And it mattereth not unto me, after a little, if it so be that they fill their mission, whether they go by water or by land. Let this be as it is made known unto them according to their judgments hereafter. And now concerning my servants, Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith Jr., and Oliver Cowdery. Let them come not again upon the waters, save it be upon the canal, while journeying unto their homes. Or, in other words, they shall not come upon the waters to journey, save upon the canal. Behold, I, the Lord, have appointed a way for the journeying of my saints. And behold, this is the way, that after they leave the canal, they shall journey by land, inasmuch as they are commanded to journey, and go up unto the land of Zion. And they shall do like unto the children of Israel, pitching their tents by the way. And behold, this commandment you shall give unto all your brethren. Nevertheless, unto whom is given power to command the waters, unto him it is given by the Spirit to know all his ways. Wherefore, let him do as the Spirit of the living God commandeth him, whether upon the land or upon the waters, as it remaineth with me to do hereafter. And unto you is given the course for the saints, or the way for the saints of the camp of the Lord to journey. And again, verily I say unto you, my servants, Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, shall not open their mouths in the congregations of the wicked until they arrive at Cincinnati. And in that place they shall lift up their voices unto God against that people, yea, unto him whose anger is kindled against their wickedness, a people who are well nigh ripened for destruction. And from thence let them journey for the congregations of their brethren, for their labors even now are wanted more abundantly among them than among the congregations of the wicked. And now concerning the residue, let them journey and declare the word among the congregations of the wicked, inasmuch as it is given. And inasmuch as they do this, they shall rid their garments, and they shall be spotless before me. Let them journey together, or two by two, as seemeth them good. 
Only let my servant Reynolds Cahoon and my servant Samuel H. Smith, with whom I am well pleased, be not separated until they return to their homes, and this for a wise purpose in me. And now verily I say unto you, and what I say unto one I say unto all, be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst, and I have not forsaken you. And inasmuch as you have humbled yourselves before me, the blessings of the kingdom are yours. Gird up your loins, and be watchful, and be sober, looking forth for the coming of the Son of Man. For he cometh in an hour, you think not. Pray always that you enter not into temptation, that you may abide the day of his coming, whether in life or in death. Even so, amen. Section 62 Behold and hearken, O ye elders of my church, saith the Lord your God, even Jesus Christ, your advocate, who knoweth the weakness of man, and how to succor them who are tempted. And verily mine eyes are upon those who have not as yet gone up unto the land of Zion. Wherefore your mission is not yet full. Nevertheless ye are blessed, for the testimony which ye have borne is recorded in heaven for the angels to look upon. And they rejoice over you, and your sins are forgiven you. And now continue your journey, assemble yourselves upon the land of Zion, and hold a meeting, and rejoice together, and offer a sacrament unto the Most High. And then you may return to bear record, yea, even all together, or two by two, as seemeth you good. It mattereth not unto me, only be faithful, and declare glad tidings unto the inhabitants of the earth, or among the congregations of the wicked. Behold, I, the Lord, have brought you together, that the promise might be fulfilled, that the faithful among you should be preserved, and rejoice together in the land of Missouri. I, the Lord, promise the faithful, and cannot lie. I, the Lord, am willing, if any among you desire to ride upon horses, or upon mules, or in chariots, he shall receive this blessing, if he receive it from the hand of the Lord with a thankful heart in all things. These things remain with you to do according to judgment and the directions of the Spirit. Behold, the kingdom is yours, and behold, and lo, I am with the faithful always. Even so, amen. Section 63. <coughs> Hearken, O ye people, and open your hearts, and give ear from afar, and listen, you that call yourselves the people of the Lord, and hear the word of the Lord and his will concerning you. Yea, verily I say, hear the word of him whose anger is kindled against the wicked and rebellious, who willeth to take even them whom he will take, and preserveth in life them whom he will preserve, who buildeth up at his own will and pleasure, and destroyeth when he pleases, and is able to cast the soul down to hell. Behold, I, the Lord, utter my voice, and it shall be obeyed. Wherefore, verily I say, let the wicked take heed, and let the rebellious fear and tremble, and let the unbelieving hold their lips, for the day of wrath shall come upon them as a whirlwind, and all flesh shall know that I am God. And he that seeketh signs shall see signs, but not unto salvation. Verily I say unto you, There are those among you who seek signs, and there have been such even from the beginning. But behold, faith cometh not by signs, but signs follow those that believe. Yea, signs come by faith, not by the will of men, nor as they please, but by the will of God. Yea, signs come by faith unto mighty works, for without faith no man pleaseth God. And with whom God is angry, he is not well pleased. Wherefore, unto such he showeth no signs, only in wrath unto their condemnation. Wherefore, I, the Lord, am not pleased with those among you who have sought after signs and wonders for faith, and not for the good of men unto my glory. Nevertheless, I give commandments, and many have turned away from my commandments, and have not kept them. There were among you adulterers and adulteresses, some of whom have turned away from you, and others remain with you, that hereafter shall be revealed. 
Let such beware and repent speedily, lest judgment shall come upon them as a snare, and their folly shall be made manifest, and their works shall follow them in the eyes of the people. And verily I say unto you, as I have said before, he that looketh on a woman to lust after her, or if any shall commit adultery in their hearts, they shall not have the spirit, but shall deny the faith, and shall fear. Wherefore I, the Lord, have said that the fearful and the unbelieving and all liars, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, and the whoremonger and the sorcerer, shall have their part in that lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Verily I say, that they shall not have part in the first resurrection. And now behold, I, the Lord, say unto you, that ye are not justified, because these things are among you. Nevertheless, he that endureth in faith, and doeth my will, the same shall overcome, and shall receive an inheritance upon the earth, when the day of transfiguration shall come. When the earth shall be transfigured, even according to the pattern which was shown unto mine apostles upon the mount, of which account the fullness ye have not yet received. And now verily I say unto you, that as I said that I would make known my will unto you, behold, I will make it known unto you, not by the way of commandment, for there are many who observe not to keep my commandments, but unto him that keepeth my commandments I will give the mysteries of my kingdom, and the same shall be in him a well of living water, springing up unto everlasting life. And now behold, this is the will of the Lord your God concerning his saints, that they should assemble themselves together unto the land of Zion, not in haste, lest there should be confusion, which bringeth pestilence. Behold, the land of Zion, I the Lord, hold it in mine own hands. Nevertheless, I the Lord, render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's. Wherefore, I the Lord, will that you should purchase the lands, that you may have advantage of the world, that you may have claim on the world, that they may not be stirred up unto anger. For Satan putteth it into their hearts to anger against you, and to the shedding of blood. Wherefore the land of Zion shall not be obtained but by purchase or by blood, otherwise there is none inheritance for you. And if by purchase, behold, you are blessed. And if by blood, as you are forbidden to shed blood, Lo, your enemies are upon you, and ye shall be scourged from city to city, and from synagogue to synagogue, and but few shall stand to receive an inheritance. I, the Lord, am angry with the wicked. I am holding my spirit from the inhabitants of the earth. I have sworn in my wrath, and decreed wars upon the face of the earth. And the wicked shall slay the wicked, and fear shall come upon every man. And the saints also shall hardly escape. Nevertheless, I, the Lord, am with them, and will come down in heaven from the presence of my Father, and consume the wicked with unquenchable fire. And behold, this is not yet, but by and by. Wherefore, seeing that I, the Lord, have decreed all these things upon the face of the earth, I will that my saints should be assembled upon the land of Zion and that every man should take righteousness in his hands, and faithfulness upon his loins, and lift a warning voice unto the inhabitants of the earth, and declare both by word and by flight that desolation shall come upon the wicked. Wherefore, let my disciples in Kirtland arrange their temporal concerns who dwell upon this farm. Let my servant Titus Billings, who has the care thereof, dispose of the land, that he may be prepared in the coming spring to take his journey up unto the land of Zion, with those that dwell upon the face thereof, excepting those whom I shall reserve unto myself, that shall not go until I shall command them. And let all the monies which can be spared, it mattereth not unto me, whether it be little or much, be sent up unto the land of Zion, unto them whom I have appointed to receive, Behold, I, the Lord, will give unto my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., power that he shall be enabled to discern by the Spirit those who shall go up unto the land of Zion, and those of my disciples who shall tarry. Let my servant Newell K. Whitney retain his store 
or in other words, the store, yet for a little season. Nevertheless, let him impart all the money which he can impart to be sent up unto the land of Zion. Behold, these things are in his own hands. Let him do according to wisdom. Verily I say, let him be ordained as an agent unto the disciples that shall tarry, and let him be ordained unto this power. And now speedily visit the churches, expounding these things unto them, with my servant Oliver Cowdery. Behold, this is my will, obtaining monies even as I have directed. He that is faithful and endureth shall overcome the world. He that sendeth up treasures unto the land of Zion shall receive an inheritance in this world, and his work shall follow him, and also a reward in the world to come. Yea, and blessed are the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth, when the Lord shall come, and old things shall pass away, and all things become new. They shall rise from the dead, and shall not die after, and shall receive an inheritance before the Lord in the holy city. And he that liveth when the Lord shall come, and hath kept the faith, blessed is he. Nevertheless, it is appointed to him to die at the age of man. Wherefore, children shall grow up until they become old. Old men shall die, but they shall not sleep in the dust, but they shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Wherefore, for this cause preach the apostles unto the world the resurrection of the dead. These things are the things that ye must look for. And, speaking after the manner of the Lord, they are now nigh at hand, and in a time to come, even in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. And until that hour there will be foolish virgins among the wise, and at that hour cometh an entire separation of the righteous and the wicked. And in that day will I send mine angels to pluck out the wicked and cast them into unquenchable fire. And now behold, verily I say unto you, I, the Lord, am not pleased with my servant Sidney Rigdon. He exalted himself in his heart, and received not counsel, but grieved the spirit. Wherefore his writing is not acceptable unto the Lord, and he shall make another. And if the Lord receive it not, behold, he standeth no longer in the office to which I have appointed him. And again, verily I say unto you, those who desire in their hearts and meekness to warn sinners to repentance, let them be ordained unto this power. For this is a day of warning, and not a day of many words. For I, the Lord, am not to be mocked in the last days. Behold, I am from above, and my power lieth beneath. I am over all, and in all, and through all, and search all things. And the day cometh that all things shall be subject unto me. Behold, I am Alpha and Omega, even Jesus Christ. Wherefore, let all men beware how they take my name in their lips. For behold, verily I say, that many there be who are under this condemnation, who use the name of the Lord, and use it in vain, having not authority. Wherefore, let the church repent of their sins, and I, the Lord, will own them, otherwise they shall be cut off. Remember that that which cometh from above is sacred, and must be spoken with care, and by constraint of the Spirit. And in this there is no condemnation. And ye receive the Spirit through prayer. Wherefore, without this there remaineth condemnation. Let my servants Joseph Smith Jr. and Sidney Rigdon seek them a home, as they are taught through prayer by the Spirit. These things remain to overcome through patience, that such may receive a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, otherwise a greater condemnation. Amen. Section 64 Behold, thus saith the Lord your God unto you, O ye elders of my church, hearken ye and hear, and receive my will concerning you. For verily I say unto you, I will that ye should overcome the world, Wherefore, I will have compassion upon you. There are those among you who have sinned. But verily I say, for this once, for mine own glory, and for the salvation of souls, I have forgiven you your sins. I will be merciful unto you, for I have given unto you the kingdom. 
and the keys of the mysteries of the kingdom shall not be taken from my servant Joseph Smith, Jr. Through the means I have appointed, while he liveth, inasmuch as he obeyeth mine ordinances. There are those who have sought occasion against him without cause. Nevertheless, he has sinned. But verily I say unto you, I, the Lord, forgive sins unto those who confess their sins before me, and ask forgiveness, who have not sinned unto death. My disciples in days of old sought occasion against one another, and forgave not one another in their hearts. And for this evil they were afflicted and sorely chastened. Wherefore I say unto you, that ye ought to forgive one another, for he that forgiveth not his brother, his trespasses standeth condemned before the Lord, for there remaineth in him the greater sin. I the Lord will forgive whom I will forgive, but of you it is required to forgive all men. And ye ought to say in your hearts, Let God judge between me and thee, and reward thee according to thy deeds. And him that repenteth not of his sins, and confesseth them not, ye shall bring before the church, and doeth him as the scripture saith unto you, either by commandment or by revelation. And this ye shall do, that God may be glorified, not because ye forgive not, and having not compassion, but that ye may be justified in the eyes of the law, that ye may not offend him who is your lawgiver. Verily I say, for this cause ye shall do these things. Behold, I, the Lord, was angry with him who was my servant Ezra Booth, and also my servant Isaac Morley, for they kept not the law, neither the commandment. They sought evil in their hearts, and I, the Lord, withheld my spirit. They condemned for evil that thing in which there was no evil. Nevertheless, I have forgiven my servant Isaac Morley. And also my servant Edward Partridge, behold, he hath sinned, and Satan seeketh to destroy his soul. But when these things are made known unto them, and they repent of the evil, they shall be forgiven. And now verily I say that it is expedient in me that my servant Sidney Gilbert, after a few weeks, shall return upon his business and to his agency in the land of Zion. And that which he hath seen and heard may be made known unto my disciples, that they perish not. And for this cause have I spoken these things. And again I say unto you, that my servant Isaac Morley may not be tempted above that which he is able to bear, and counsel wrongfully to your hurt. I gave commandment that his farm should be sold. I will not that my servant Frederick G. Williams should sell his farm, for I, the Lord, will to retain a stronghold in the land of Kirtland for the space of five years, in the which I will not overthrow the wicked, that thereby I may save some. And after that day, I, the Lord, will not hold any guilty that shall go with an open heart up to the land of Zion, for I, the Lord, require the hearts of the children of men. Behold, now it is called today until the coming of the Son of Man, and verily it is a day of sacrifice, and a day for the tithing of my people, for he that is tithe shall not be burned at his coming. For after today cometh the burning. This is speaking after the manner of the Lord. For verily I say, Tomorrow all the proud, and they that do wickedly, shall be a stubble, and I will burn them up. For I am the Lord of hosts, and I will not spare any that remain in Babylon. Wherefore, if ye believe me, ye will labor while it is called today. And it is not me that my servants Newell K. Whitney and Sidney Gilbert should sell their store and their possessions here. For this is not wisdom until the residue of the church, which remaineth in this place, shall go up unto the land of Zion. Behold, it is said in my laws, or forbidden, to get in debt to thine enemies, but behold, it is not said at any time that the Lord should not take when he please, and pay as seemeth him good. Wherefore, as ye are agents, ye are on the Lord's errand, and whatever ye do according to the will of the Lord is the Lord's business. And he hath set you to provide for his saints in these last days, that they may obtain an inheritance in the land of Zion. And behold, I, the Lord, declare unto you, and my words are sure, and shall not fail. 
that they shall obtain it. But all things must come to pass in their time. Wherefore, be not weary in well-doing, for you are laying the foundation of a great work, and out of small things proceedeth that which is great. Behold, the Lord requireth the heart and a willing mind, and the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land of Zion in these last days. And the rebellious shall be cut off out of the land of Zion, and shall be sent away, and shall not inherit the land. For verily I say that the rebellious are not of the blood of Ephraim, wherefore they shall be plucked out. Behold, I the Lord have made my church in these last days like unto a judge sitting on a hill, or in a high place to judge the nations. For it shall come to pass that the inhabitants of Zion shall judge all things pertaining to Zion, and liars and hypocrites shall be proved by them, and they who are not apostles and prophets shall be known. And even the bishop, who is a judge, and his counselors, if they are not faithful in their stewardships, shall be condemned, and others shall be planted in their stead. For behold, I say unto you that Zion shall flourish, and the glory of the Lord shall be upon her. And she shall be an ensign unto the people, and there shall come unto her out of every nation under heaven. And the day shall come when the nations of the earth shall tremble because of her, and shall fear because of her terrible ones. The Lord hath spoken it. Amen. Section 65 Hearken, and lo, a voice as of one sent down from on high, who is mighty and powerful, whose going forth is unto the ends of the earth. Yea, whose voice is unto men, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. The keys of the kingdom of God are committed unto man on the earth, and from thence shall the gospel roll forth unto the ends of the earth, as the stone which is cut out of the mountain without hands shall roll forth until it has filled the whole earth. Yea, a voice crying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, prepare ye the supper of the Lamb, make ready for the bridegroom. Pray unto the Lord, call upon his holy name, make known his wonderful works among the people. Call upon the Lord, that his kingdom may go forth upon the earth, that the inhabitants thereof may receive it, and be prepared for the days to come, in the which the Son of Man shall come down in heaven clothed in the brightness of his glory to meet the kingdom of God, which is set up on the earth. Wherefore, may the kingdom of God go forth, that the kingdom of heaven may come, that thou, O God, mayest be glorified in heaven, so on earth, that thine enemies may be subdued. For thine is the honor, power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. Section 66 Behold, thus saith the Lord unto my servant William E. McClellan, Blessed are you, inasmuch as you have turned away from your iniquities and have received my truths, saith the Lord your Redeemer, the Savior of the world, even of as many as believe on my name. Verily I say unto you, Blessed are you for receiving mine everlasting covenant, even the fullness of my gospel sent forth unto the children of men that they might have life and be made partakers of the glories which are to be revealed in the last days, as it was written by the prophets and apostles in days of old. Verily I say unto you, my servant William, that you are clean, but not all. Repent, therefore, of those things which are not pleasing in my sight, saith the Lord, for the Lord will show them unto you. And now, verily I, the Lord, will show unto you what I will concerning you. Or what is my will concerning you? Behold, verily I say unto you, that it is my will that you should proclaim my gospel from land to land, and from city to city, yea, in those regions round about where it has not been proclaimed. Tarry not many days in this place, go not up unto the land of Zion as yet, but inasmuch as you can, send, send, otherwise think not of thy property. Go unto the eastern lands, bear testimony in every place, unto every people, and in their synagogues, reasoning with the people. Let my servant Samuel H. Smith go with you, and forsake him not, and give him thine instructions, 
and he that is faithful shall be made strong in every place. And I, the Lord, will go with you. Lay your hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Return not till I, the Lord, shall send you. Be patient in affliction. Ask, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Seek not to be cumbered. Forsake all unrighteousness. Commit not adultery. A temptation with which thou hast been troubled. Keep these sayings, for they are true and faithful. And thou shalt magnify thine office, and push many people to Zion, with songs of everlasting joy upon their heads. Continue in these things even unto the end, and you shall have a crown of eternal life at the right hand of my Father, who is full of grace and truth. Verily, thus saith the Lord your God, your Redeemer, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Section 67 Behold and hearken, O ye elders of my church, who have assembled yourselves together, whose prayers I have heard, and whose hearts I know, and whose desires have come up before me. Behold and lo, mine eyes are upon you, and the heavens and the earth are in mine hands, and the riches of eternity are mine to give. Ye endeavored to believe that ye should receive the blessing which was offered unto you. But behold, verily I say unto you, there were fears in your hearts, and verily this is the reason that ye did not receive. And now I, the Lord, give unto you a testimony of the truth of these commandments which are lying before you. Your eyes have been upon my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., and his language you have known, and his imperfections you have known. And you have sought in your hearts knowledge that you might express beyond his language. This you also know. Now seek ye out of the book of commandments, even the least that is among them, and appoint him that is the most wise among you. Or, if there be any among you that shall make one like unto it, then ye are justified in saying that ye do not know that they are true. But if ye cannot make one like unto it, ye are under condemnation, if ye do not bear record that they are true. For ye know that there is no unrighteousness in them, and that which is righteous cometh down from above, from the Father of lights. <clears throat> and again, verily I say unto you, that it is your privilege, and a promise I give unto you, that have been ordained unto this ministry, that inasmuch as ye strip yourselves from jealousies and fears, and humble yourselves before me, for ye are not sufficiently humble, the veil shall be rent, and you shall see me and know that I am, not with the carnal, neither natural mind, but with the spiritual. For no man has seen God at any time in the flesh except quickened by the Spirit of God. Neither can any natural man abide the presence of God, neither after the carnal mind. Ye are not able to abide the presence of God now, neither the ministering of angels. Wherefore, continue in patience until ye are perfected. Let not your minds turn back, and when ye are worthy in mine own due time, ye shall see and know that which was conferred upon you by the hands of my servant Joseph Smith, Jr. Amen. Section 68 My servant Orson Hyde was called by his ordination to proclaim the everlasting gospel by the Spirit of the living God, from people to people and from land to land, in the congregations of the wicked, in their synagogues, reasoning with and expounding all scriptures unto them. And behold, and lo, this is an ensample unto all those who were ordained unto this priesthood, whose mission is appointed unto them to go forth. And this is the ensample unto them that they shall speak as they are moved upon by the Holy Ghost. And whatsoever they shall speak when moved upon by the Holy Ghost shall be scripture, shall be the will of the Lord, shall be the mind of the Lord, shall be the word of the Lord, shall be the voice of the Lord, and the power of God unto salvation. Behold, this is the promise of the Lord unto you, O ye my servants. Wherefore, be of good cheer, and do not fear, 
for I the Lord am with you and will stand by you. And ye shall bear record of me, even Jesus Christ, that I am the Son of the living God, that I was, that I am, and that I am to come. This is the word of the Lord unto you, my servant Orson Hyde, and also unto my servant Luke Johnson, and unto my servant Lyman Johnson, and unto my servant William E. McClellan, and unto all the faithful elders of my church. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, acting in the authority which I have given you, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And he that believeth shall be blessed with signs following, even as it is written. And unto you it shall be given to know the signs of the times, and the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. And of as many as the Father shall bear record, to you shall be given power to seal them up unto eternal life. Amen. And now, concerning the items in addition to the covenants and commandments, they are these. There remain hereafter, in the due time of the Lord, other bishops to be set apart unto the church, to minister even according to the first. Wherefore, they shall be high priests who are worthy, and they shall be appointed by the first presidency of the Melchizedek priesthood, except they be literal descendants of Aaron. And if they be literal descendants of Aaron, they have a legal right to the bishopric, if they are the firstborn among the sons of Aaron. For the firstborn holds the right of the presidency over this priesthood, and the keys or authority of the same. No man has a legal right to this office, to hold the keys of this priesthood, except he be a literal descendant and the firstborn of Aaron. But as a high priest of the Melchizedek priesthood has authority to officiate in all the lesser offices, he may officiate in the office of bishop when no literal descendant of Aaron can be found, provided he is called and set apart and ordained under this power under the hands of the first presidency of the Melchizedek priesthood. And a literal descendant of Aaron also must be designated by this presidency and found worthy and anointed and ordained under the hands of this presidency. Otherwise, they are not legally authorized to officiate in their priesthood. But by virtue of the decree concerning their right of the priesthood, descending from father to son, they may claim their anointing if at any time they can prove their lineage or do ascertain it by revelation from the Lord under the hands of the above-named presidency. And again, no bishop or high priest who shall be set apart for this ministry shall be tried or condemned for any crime, save it be before the first presidency of the church. And inasmuch as he is found guilty before this presidency by testimony that cannot be impeached, he shall be condemned. And if he repent, he shall be forgiven according to the covenants and commandments of the church. And again, inasmuch as parents have children in Zion, or in any of her stakes which are organized, that teach them not to understand the doctrine of repentance, faith in Christ, the Son of the living God, and of baptism, and the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of the hands, when eight years old, the sin be upon the heads of the parents. For this shall be a law unto the inhabitants of Zion, or in any of her stakes, which are organized, and their children shall be baptized for the remission of their sins, when eight years old, and receive the laying on of the hands. And they shall also teach their children to pray, and to walk uprightly before the Lord. And the inhabitants of Zion shall also observe the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. And the inhabitants of Zion also shall remember their labors, inasmuch as they are appointed to labor in all faithfulness, for the idler shall be had in remembrance before the Lord. Now I, the Lord, am not well pleased with the inhabitants of Zion, for there are idlers among them, and their children are also growing up in wickedness. They also seek not earnestly the riches of eternity, 
but their eyes are full of greediness. These things ought not to be, and must be done away from among them. Wherefore let my servant Oliver Cowdery carry these sayings unto the land of Zion. And a commandment I give unto them, that he that observeth not his prayers before the Lord in the season thereof, let him be had in remembrance before the judge of my people. These sayings are true and faithful. Wherefore, transgress them not, neither take therefrom. Behold, I am Alpha and Omega, and I come quickly. Amen. Section 69 Hearken unto me, saith the Lord your God, for my servant Oliver Cowdery's sake. It is not wisdom in me that he should be entrusted with the commandments and the monies which he shall carry unto the land of Zion, except one go with him who will be true and faithful. Wherefore I, the Lord, will that my servant John Whitmer should go with my servant Oliver Cowdery, and also that he shall continue in writing and making a history of all the important things which he shall observe and know concerning my church, and also that he receive counsel and assistance from my servant Oliver Cowdery and others. And also my servants who are abroad in the earth should send forth the accounts of their stewardships to the land of Zion. For the land of Zion shall be a seat and a place to receive and do all these things. Nevertheless, let my servant John Whitmer travel many times from place to place and from church to church, that he may the more easily obtain knowledge, preaching and expounding, writing, copying, selecting, and obtaining all things which shall be for the good of the church and for the rising generations that shall grow up on the land of Zion, to possess it from generation to generation forever and ever. Amen. Section 70 Behold and hearken, O ye inhabitants of Zion, and all ye people of my church, who are afar off, and hear the word of the Lord, which I give unto my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., and also unto my servant Martin Harris, and also unto my servant Oliver Cowdery, and also unto my servant John Whitmer, and also unto my servant Sidney Rigdon, and also unto my servant William W. Phelps, by the way of commandment unto them. For I give unto them a commandment, wherefore hearken and hear, for thus saith the Lord unto them, I the Lord have appointed them and ordained them to be stewards over the revelations and commandments which I have given unto them and which I shall hereafter give unto them. And an account of this stewardship will I require of them in the day of judgment. Wherefore I have appointed unto them, and this is their business in the church of God, to manage them and the concerns thereof, yea, the benefits thereof. Wherefore a commandment I give unto them, that they shall not give these things unto the church, neither unto the world, Nevertheless, inasmuch as they receive more than is needful for their necessities and their wants, it shall be given into my storehouse, and the benefits shall be consecrated unto the inhabitants of Zion, and unto their generations, inasmuch as they become heirs according to the laws of the kingdom. Behold, this is what the Lord requires of every man in his stewardship. Even as I the Lord have appointed or shall hereafter appoint unto any man. And behold, none are exempt from this law who belong to the church of the living God. Yea, neither the bishop, neither the agent who keepeth the Lord's storehouse, neither he who is appointed in a stewardship over temporal things, he who is appointed to administer spiritual things, the same is worthy of his hire. Even as those who are appointed to a stewardship to administer in temporal things, yea, even more abundantly, which abundance is multiplied unto them through the manifestations of the Spirit. <clears throat> Nevertheless, in your temporal things you shall be equal, and this not grudgingly, otherwise the abundance of the manifestations of the Spirit shall be withheld. Now this commandment I give unto my servants for their benefit while they remain, for a manifestation of my blessings upon their heads, and for a reward of their diligence, and for their security, for food and for raiment, for an inheritance, 
for houses and for lands, in whatsoever circumstances I, the Lord, shall place them, and whithersoever I, the Lord, shall send them. For they have been faithful over many things, and have done well inasmuch as they have not sinned. Behold, I, the Lord, am merciful, and will bless them, and they shall enter into the joy of these things. Even so, amen. Section 71 Behold, thus saith the Lord unto you, my servants, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Sidney Rigdon, that the time has verily come, that it is necessary and expedient in me that you should open your mouths in proclaiming my gospel, the things of the kingdom, expounding the mysteries thereof out of the scriptures, according to that portion of spirit and power which shall be given unto you even as I will. Verily I say unto you, Proclaim unto the world in the regions round about, and in the church also, for the space of a season, even until it shall be made known unto you. Verily this is a mission for a season which I give unto you. Wherefore, labor ye in my vineyard, call upon the inhabitants of the earth, and bear record, and prepare the way for the commandments and revelations which are to come. Now behold, this is wisdom. Whoso readeth, let him understand, and receive also. For unto him that receiveth it shall be given more abundantly, even power. Wherefore, confound your enemies, call upon them to meet you both in public and in private, and inasmuch as ye are faithful, their shame shall be made manifest. Wherefore, let them bring forth their strong reasons against the Lord. Verily, thus saith the Lord unto you, There is no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And if any man lift his voice against you, he shall be confounded in mine own due time. Wherefore, keep my commandments. They are true and faithful. Even so, amen. Section 72 Hearken and listen to the voice of the Lord, O ye who have assembled yourselves together, who are the high priests of my church, to whom the kingdom and power has been given. For verily thus saith the Lord, It is expedient in me for a bishop to be appointed unto you, or of you, unto the church in this part of the Lord's vineyard. And verily in this thing ye have done wisely, for it is required of the Lord, at the hand of every steward, to render an account of his stewardship, both in time and in eternity. For he who is faithful and wise in time is accounted worthy to inherit the mansions prepared for him of my Father. Verily I say unto you, the elders of the church in this part of my vineyard shall render an account of their stewardship unto the bishop, who shall be appointed of me in this part of my vineyard. These things shall be had on record, to be handed over unto the bishop in Zion. And the duty of the bishop shall be made known by the commandments which have been given, and the voice of the conference. And now verily I say unto you, my servant Newell K. Whitney is the man who shall be appointed and ordained under this power. This is the will of the Lord your God, your Redeemer, even so, amen. The word of the Lord, in addition to the law, which has been given, making known the duty of the bishop, who has been ordained under the church in this part of the vineyard, which is verily this, to keep the Lord's storehouse, to receive the funds of the church in this part of the vineyard, to take an account of the elders, as before has been commanded, and to administer to their wants, who shall pay for that which they receive, inasmuch as they have wherewith to pay, that this also may be consecrated to the good of the church, to the poor and needy. And he who hath not wherewith to pay, an account shall be taken and handed over to the bishop of Zion, who shall pay the debt out of that which the Lord shall put into his hands. And the labors of the faithful who labor in spiritual things, in administering the gospel and the things of the kingdom unto the church and unto the world, shall answer the debt unto the bishop in Zion. 
Thus it cometh out of the church, for according to the law, every man that cometh up to Zion must lay all things before the bishop in Zion. And now verily I say unto you, that as every elder in this part of the vineyard must give an account of his stewardship unto the bishop in this part of the vineyard, a certificate from the judge or bishop in this part of the vineyard unto the bishop in Zion rendereth every man acceptable, and answereth all things for an inheritance, and to be received as a wise steward and as a faithful laborer. Otherwise he shall not be accepted of the bishop of Zion. And now verily I say unto you, that every elder who shall give an account unto the bishop of the church in this part of the vineyard be recommended by the church or churches in which he labors, that he may render himself and his accounts approved in all things. And again, let my servants who are appointed as stewards over the literary concerns of my church have claim for assistance upon the bishop or bishops in all things, that the revelations may be published and go forth unto the ends of the earth, that they also may obtain funds which shall benefit the church in all things, that they also may render themselves approved in all things and be accounted as wise stewards, and now, behold, this shall be an ensample for all the extensive branches of my church, in whatsoever land they shall be established. And now I make an end of my sayings. Amen. A few words in addition to the laws of the kingdom respecting the members of the church, they that are appointed by the Holy Spirit to go up unto Zion, and they who are privileged to go up unto Zion, let them carry up unto the bishop a certificate from three elders of the church, or a certificate from the bishop. Otherwise, he who shall go up unto the land of Zion shall not be accounted as a wise steward. This is also an example. Amen. Section 73 For verily thus saith the Lord, It is expedient in me that they should continue preaching the gospel and in exhortation to the churches in the regions round about until conference. And then, behold, it shall be made known unto them by the voice of the conference their several missions. Now verily I say unto you, my servants, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Sidney Rigdon, saith the Lord, it is expedient to translate again. And inasmuch as it is practicable to preach in the regions round about until conference, and after that it is expedient to continue the work of translation until it be finished. And let this be a pattern unto the elders until further knowledge, even as it is written. Now I give no more unto you at this time. Gird up your loins and be sober. Even so, amen. Section 74. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Now in the days of the apostles, the law of circumcision was had among all the Jews who believed not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it came to pass that there arose a great contention among the people concerning the law of circumcision. For the unbelieving husband was desirous that his children should be circumcised and become subject to the law of Moses, which law was fulfilled. And it came to pass that the children, being brought up in subjection to the law of Moses, gave heed to the traditions of their fathers, and believed not the gospel of Christ, wherein they became holy. Wherefore, for this cause, the apostle wrote unto the church, giving unto them a commandment, not of the Lord, but of himself, that a believer should not be united to an unbeliever, except the law of Moses should be done away among them, that their children might remain without circumcision, and that the tradition might be done away, which saith that little children are unholy, for it was had among the Jews. But little children are holy, being sanctified through the atonement of Jesus Christ, and this is what the scriptures mean. Section 75 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, I who speak, even by the voice of my spirit, even Alpha and Omega, your Lord and your God, hearken, O ye who have given your names to go forth to proclaim my gospel and to prune my vineyard. Behold, I say unto you that it is my will that you should go forth and not tarry, neither be idle, but labor with your might, lifting up your voices as with the sound of a trump, proclaiming the truth according to the revelations and commandments which I have given you. And thus, if you are faithful, you shall be laden with many sheaves, and crowned with honor and glory, and immortality and eternal life. Therefore, verily I say unto my servant William E. McLellan, I revoke the commission which I gave unto him to go unto the eastern countries, and I give unto him a new commission and a new commandment, in the which I the Lord chasten him for the murmurings of his heart, and he sinned. Nevertheless, I forgive him, and say unto him again, Go ye into the south countries, and let my servant Luke Johnson go with him, and proclaim the things which I have commanded them, calling on the name of the Lord for the Comforter, which shall teach them all things that are expedient for them, praying always that they faint not, and inasmuch as they do this, I will be with them even unto the end. Behold, this is the will of the Lord your God concerning you, even so, amen. And again, verily thus saith the Lord, Let my servant Orson Hyde and my servant Samuel H. Smith take their journey into the eastern countries and proclaim the things which I have commanded them. And inasmuch as they are faithful, lo, I will be with them even unto the end. And again, verily I say unto my servant Lyman Johnson and unto my servant Orson Pratt, they shall also take their journey into the eastern countries. And behold, and lo, I am with them also, even unto the end. And again I say unto my servant Asadads, and unto my servant Calves Wilson, that they also shall take their journey unto the western countries and proclaim my gospel, even as I have commanded them. And he who is faithful shall overcome all things, and shall be lifted up at the last day. And again I say unto my servant Major N. Ashley, and my servant Burr Riggs, Let them take their journey also into the south country. Yea, let all those take their journey as I have commanded them, going from house to house, and from village to village, and from city to city. And in whatsoever house ye enter, and they receive you, leave your blessing upon that house. And in whatsoever house ye enter, and they receive you not, ye shall depart speedily from that house and shake off the dust of your feet as a testimony against them. And you shall be filled with joy and gladness, and know th this, that in the day of judgment you shall be judges of that house and condemn them. And it shall be more tolerable for the heathen in the day of judgment than for that house, Therefore gird up your loins, and be faithful, and ye shall overcome all things, and be lifted up at the last day. Even so, amen. And again, thus saith the Lord unto you, O ye elders of my church, who have given your names, that you might know his will concerning you. Behold, I say unto you, that it is the duty of the church to assist in supporting the families of those and also to support the families of those who are called and must needs be sent unto the world to proclaim the gospel unto the world. Wherefore I, the Lord, give unto you this commandment, that ye obtain places for your families, inasmuch as your brethren are willing to open their hearts. And let all such as can obtain places for their families and support of the church for them not fail to go into the world, whether to the east or to the west or to the north or to the south. Let them ask, and they shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto them, and be made known from on high, even by the Comforter, whither they shall go. And again, verily I say unto you, that every man who is obliged to provide for his own family, let him provide, and he shall in no wise lose his crown, and let him labor in the church. Let every man be diligent in all things, and the idler shall not have place in the church, except he repent and mend his ways. 
Wherefore, let my servant Simon Carter and my servant Emmer Harris be united in the ministry. Also my servant Ezra Thayer and my servant Thomas B. Marsh. Also my servant Hiram Smith and my servant Reynolds Cahoon. And also my servant Daniel Stanton and my servant Seymour Brunson. And also my servant Sylvester Smith and my servant Gideon Carter. And also my servant Ruggles Emus and my servant Stephen Burnett. And also my servant Micah B. Welton, and also my servant Eden Smith. Even so, amen.